Hey everybody, it's me, Matt Rogers, letting you know tickets are on sale now to see me on tour. The Prince of Christmas tour, that is. I'm doing my whole album, Have You Heard of Christmas, plus a lot more with the whole band all throughout December. Go to www.mattrogersofficial.com to see me in a city near you. And now, Las Colch. Drums. Look, man. There. Oh, I see. Wow. Oh, my. Bowen, look over there. Wow, is that Ooh, culture? Oh, yes. My goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Las Culturistas. Ding dong, Las, Las Culturistas, Culturistas calling. calling. And this feels like the culmination. I don't know what to say. I think we pack it up after this. After this, it's to, uh, to the graveyard with us. Yeah. And to all the haters y'all won yeah y'all won and also it's fine it's we fine. did it we did the thing we needed to do for our life to be complete we've peaked personally professionally journalistically yes and we're giving a festive moment today in honor of our guest it is of course September 26th at this time of recording so it's not yet it's but... not yet on not yet because it's really not yet it's really not yet yeah. but um, as we approach it's T word mm -hmm. you know it's it's just the anticipation is building. I'm just even donning this Princess Diana sweater yeah. with the lamely on it, as it were. I'm feeling the festive spirit, even though it's not yet. So those who know, the real ones know. Okay, I want to take you back. It's April 11th, 2000, in Madison Square Garden, my very first concert of my entire life. Uh, my parents got me for my birthday, Mariah Carey, The Rainbow Tour, which really was a narrative about trying to hunt down Bianca. Yes! I do want to find out that, if we ever that got B her. Word. That B word. That B word. The character from perhaps the greatest music video of all time. You know, the other day I'm digging in my artifacts and I find this. <gasps> so this is do? the cassette of Single. Mariah Carey Boys to Men, One Sweet Day, which I would play the F out in the car with my mother on Long Island. We have that in common as well. Oh. And to say that this is wish fulfillment is beyond, I cannot believe you're here. We did meet briefly at Peloton. Yes. It was not necessarily an exchange of words. It was more an exchange of, what would you call Support. it? Support. I think I think you helped our guests down from the podium from which she said it's T word that year. Yes. Um, the T word being time. The T word being time. Uh, but it was a perfect prelude to this moment, which I think has been um, <laughs> in the stars, destined uh, for, for, for time eternal. It's a major moment, I'm gonna make it through. I can make it through the rain. You can the rain the being rain. my uh, eventual tears. Um, but as a card carrying, platinum card carrying member of the Lamely, and I know I speak for so many people that are listening and watching this right now, we are so excited to welcome the greatest of all time, Mariah Carey! You really are here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, the, like the prequel to It's Time. Right, well, yeah, there's the not yet. Right. Yeah. And then maybe I'm just like waving up at the world going, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it ever too early? When do you start decorating, I wonder? I wait. You wait. Yeah. Actually, I wait till I... I'm done with the tour. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then it's trees, it's trees and ornaments. I like your ornament. Thank yes. you. <laughs> well, it's from the Amazon Music collaboration with yes. Mariah on October 31st. Go to Amazon.com slash Mariah Care. <laughs> you can buy ornaments, snow globes, snow exclusive globes. tour merchant apparel. I mean, Talk about the snow globes. What? How did you pick out the scenery and the dioramas of the snow globes? Yes, the dioramas. The dioramas. <laughs> this is a vocabulary. My podcast. gosh, you guys win. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the snow globes with the the MC logo. I oh. must. And the it's it's glittery snow. I would call that right. Yeah, yeah. I would it's say glittery snow. And that's my little caricature mm -hmm. of me and some reindeer. And I just. I thought it would look pretty with this kind of the the gold down here. Of I course. love it. The adornments. The adornments. It's yes. For Coco. <laughs> the adornments. I have to say, every time I use a word that makes you laugh, I feel very happy. <laughs> you know, you're a you're a vocabulary legend. You're a vocab you legend. You know this. You're adverb I, queen. I mean, I kind of like used to be, but I don't. It's not that I don't try anymore, but I don't I don't know what the word is. I just see. I don't know what the word is. Well, well there you go. <laughs> you know that you had a lot. 
a, you really had me saying the word nonchalantly in third grade. Nonchalantly. Like uh, people are like, "Hey Matt, do you, what do you, what do you want to play at recess today?" I'm nonchalant about it, just because of your of songs. Breakdown. I I listened yes. to that the other day and I was like, I guess I'm trying to be nonchalant about it. Yep. Who did I think I was? <laughs> you were Mariah. You knew you were Mariah. You were Mariah. Nonchalant. I'm trying to be. It's so I, I was using incessant before I even knew what the word incessant. But I just heard incessantly and I was like, well, if Mariah is using that it, it rhymed. That's yes. Why I got away with it. <laughs> and not for nothing, but incessantly in a number one hit song. They're not using words like that anymore in number one hit songs. They're not. No! I don't think so. I think, you know, in this TikTok age, it's like everyone's got to be quick and it's got to be monosyllabic. You, yeah. you, you can't throw a, a Lee or a, anything in there. Right. You know? The Lees get them. The Lees, the Lees get them. But I think the Lees <laughs> rhymes with the Mees. And I right. feel like you are singing from your point of view. Right. And so therefore it works. Yeah. It's the puzzle piece. <laughs> it's you know? the puzzle piece. Yeah, we were uh, we were reading in Vanity Fair in this recent interview you did that by Rob Ladoni, friend of, friend of mine, friend of Yay. friend of the pod. It, it, it's been six years since Caution, and yeah. so we not and we'll, we'll, can't but, believe that. Mm, which is too long. One of my favorite albums in the last S decade. Brilliant. Wow. Truly, truly, Thank truly. You. It didn't get the push and promotion that it deserved. Agree. And sad about that, you know. Am I? Yeah. Are you? <laughs> that, that was because that was bangers on bangers. I was. At, I remember it was in like Gowanus, and you did that sit down like that was really focused on your songwriting, and it was like around the release of Caution. I actually went with my friend Mariah Smith. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, so it was me and Mariah watching Mariah, and it was like that album was was total fire, and it like it really was that conversation was about your songwriting. And mm -hmm. I think that like that's what I get most excited about when it comes to you. And so when we're asking about the new music, I just want to know like, are you writing now? Like, what's happening? Like, what's inspiring you? Yes, I am writing now. But the more I talk about new music yeah. and that I'm doing this, and it's probably coming out in whatever a year or two years, um, everybody gets mad at me because they're like, "What makes you? Why are you telling us this?" And then it doesn't come out in a year. And then oh, it's, sure. You know what I mean? We ain't mad they at do. you. They do. Some people be mad. No. no. <laughs> they just need to let you work. It just does feel like you know, six years we already. Twenty twenty five is the year. I'm saying it. And I will <laughs> concur. Okay. okay. <laughs> we have a concur. A concur is not a commitment. Like if no. if it gets pushed, we'll understand. Yes. It really does need to happen. Yeah. Yes, we, we agree. We are over here agreeing. We had caution on during a drive up state, I remember in 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, damn, every track, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I feel like you have this quality as a vocal producer where you like are clearly working with these collaborators that you love, like your your Jermaine, du your Jermaine Dupree's and your Brian Michael Cox's. But it's like, when do you know as an artist, like that your stamp is on it, that it's, done it's ready to go because if I, I imagine that this process is like capturing a cloud and trying to like put it down into a words or a sound or something like what is your signature on as a vocal producer hmm well it takes a while I run it down once and then I'm like okay that was cute mm -hmm. and then you know I don't know how long I take I a while mm -hmm. you know so that I can live with it and you know, just really let it sink in. Yeah. And then I'll know, like, okay, there's about five words that I want to redo the mm -hmm. way the way I sang that. Uh huh. You know, I didn't like that. Uh huh. Um, and or it's it's okay, but I want to try something different. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's a different process from like the songwriting of it, because it, right, like yes. that's just getting it down. How do I say it? It's a it's an interesting like it's like a like a sandwich. Okay. <laughs> yes, Got it. Yes, yes. <laughs> because you're famously stacked. He's famously stacked. <laughs> and but yeah, it's it's because that it's so important to write the song first and then if you don't take your time and it's it's almost their their part their their it's part of the process yeah. to do that like go in, change this, go in, change that, you right. know. <laughs> I mean you were talking about how Hero kind of was one of the songs that came the fastest to you on a writing level. Mm -hmm. But then I imagine the production of that was a longer process. Um, It actually went 
the whole thing was sort of like at the same time. It, ha it, it happened at the same time because they were explaining to me about Dustin Hoffman's new movie mm -hmm. that, that was called Hero. And then I took a walk to the loo <laughs> and um, started hearing then. Then a hero comes along and with a strength to carry on and walked back in and said to Walter A, who I used to work with, yep. I was like, this is how the song goes. Like, can you start playing this? Mm. Yeah, and and humming to him the, da -da 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 -da, mm -hmm. you know, so mm. it just. It's wild that that can come to you so quickly and then it becomes one of the most famous hooks of all time. Does that ever like <laughs> feel strange? It's like one of the things that you thought of really on the way to and from the loo then becomes that thing that like really hits hard and maybe something you work on for a very long time like doesn't doesn't get to that point yeah well i don't know because i wasn't trying to write this big heroic for like a anthem word, anthem for the ages an anthemic heroic moment i yeah. wasn't i wasn't searching for that yeah but it you know, it kind of happened. It's what arrived. <laughs> it's what arrived. <laughs> but then some songs I am working on, you know, longer and, and, and maybe I'll end up liking them better. Like a song like Fly Like a Bird. Mm, like, mm. I love that song. And yet it's not Hero in terms of like how major Hero was in terms of success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I, I still love it. It's a Grammy winner. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> you don't have a, you don't have enough of those, by the way. Five. They I'm like, come on now. They they me. trifle with you. They, they really do. do. They play with you. The they Grammys toy with me. Can I ask what's a better <laughs> vocal performance in terms of pop music than Heartbreaker? Can we talk Ugh. about the end breakdown of Heartbreaker? I really want to get into this. Yeah, like <laughs> there's four different like vocal lines of you coming on at the same time that all call back to different parts of the song. I remember hearing that song for the first time and being like, I don't know how she did this again, but yet of course, mm -hmm. just like. What, that stacking that happens at the end. It's pure vocal performance. It's its incredible. And I wonder, is that like something you're particularly proud of? Because to me, that is pop excellence. Thank you I so mean, much. Heartbreaker is everything. I appreciate that very much because it's one of my favorites that yeah. I've done. And um, that ending was just me figuring out like, all the, the song is, is written over a loop. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So in order to do like all those different parts, it, it wasn't that difficult mm -hmm. because it's all it was pretty much the same. The, right. the song itself because of the way it's written over a loop. Yeah. Um, so then doing doing the little parts and having them interwoven with each other was just what. It's like what I like to do, so. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And just pulling it out and like isolating those hooks was just like a genius way to end that song. And that last, give me a love, is just like, it's just like <laughs> that little cherry on top that like you could live happy for, for the rest of your day when, you're, when you've listened to that. And just to speak to that moment and also that tour. So when you're doing that song, do you see the video at the same time? Because that's probably one of the best music videos ever. You versus Bianca. <laughs> <laughs> the heartbreaker music video. Yeah, and I want to know where she is now. I know we gotta find her. She was we low down. Her. <laughs> she was low down. And there was a girl on the set who was actually, um, she was like a a stand-in. Yeah. Right? Um, and she was from a different country, and and you know, because she had an accent, and yeah. she's a pretty girl, yeah. you know. And um, we're there, and. Everybody's throwing the popcorn. Like, you know, we're throwing the popcorn. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she got so mad. She's a stand-in to be there and whatever. The, the girl had popcorn on top of her hair, glued on top of her hair. Like, <laughs> that's what it was supposed to be. And she got so mad, she walked out. No, she, not her being a diva on your set. Her being a diva on my set, <laughs> no, yes. No, no, no. Yes. The injustice. The injustice. <laughs> Adding hours it, to the day. It, it didn't. And then I went out to her trailer and was like, hi, we really didn't mean to <laughs> do anything to upset you or, you know, da, da, da. No she was just like. Mm. <gasps> oh, wow. She yeah. was really giving Bianca. She was. So, you know, <laughs> Bianca, we were inspired all the more. Yeah. For, <laughs> for that conflict. That tete-a-tete. <laughs> <laughs> -tete. mm -hmm. Where did the name Bianca come from? I just made it up. Yeah, <laughs> as you're wont to do. It's another word that is pulled from 
wherever. Yes, an, an immaculate conception. Um, I wanted to just say, and also ask in addition, the Butterfly album. I think that, I don't know if this is true, but I would guess that of all the lambs, like and all the fans that come up to you across the world, that that's one that probably comes up a lot. I know for me, I listened to it at a time when I was like, really like discovering myself and it will always be so important to me. And I guess I just wanted to ask about that album. Like, does that have special significance to you as it does to your, I know your fans, that particular album? It definitely has very special significance to yeah. me. Um, I think it's probably my best album. I don't know how that doesn't have all the accolades mm -hmm. from all it those It has awards zero bodies. accolades. Zero. I don't get it. <laughs> okay. I think I'm pretty sure it has zero accolades. I mean, you. I think I, I, was, I was looking earlier just to check, and I was right. You had some nominations for it, but n not anywhere near the respect that that album deserves for not only what it did in terms of like the metamorphosis of you as an artist in your career, but I know how it inspired so mm. many artists. So yeah. many. I mean, I I love that album. It it has a certain feeling when you listen to it. Like yes, yeah. and then there's the. It's just got a lot of diversity. Like it's it's I don't know. Yeah, you go from breakdown to to butterfly mm -hmm. to my all. My all is. <laughs> I mean, we all know, but like my, it's just like you, I, again, hit play on it. And I listened to a lot of the discography this morning, happily in getting ready for this, but <laughs> just like, honey, just the way that the album starts, you yeah. know, we're in a new era. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's true. It's it's innovative. It's just, it's one of those albums that we had Kelly Clarkson in this chair like a year ago. Kind of standing you. Standing you. Oh, really? Yeah. That's she sweet. loves my all. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. But I mean, like, just that album and particularly The Roof. And oh, I was so happy that you got so into- She was talking about The Roof? No, no. no. Kelly was talking oh, about My All. All. Oh, okay. I'm talking, talking about, about The, the roof. roof. Okay. <laughs> but she could be talking about The Roof because I said- That's I, not as well known. No, but you know what though? The, the Lambs know. very intimate. That's a number one hit for The Lambs, I'm telling you. So back in the day, we did on this podcast, we did a book club reading of The Meaning of Mariah Carey. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. we did. Oh, and wow. And because it is my favorite book. And it is like, I think it's a piece of music history. It's Music, music history. It's one. It's it's the best celebrity memoir. It's like one hundred percent. The audiobook is the best celebrity audiobook. Did you like the audiobook? Yeah, of Where course. was the Grammy for that? <gasps> oh yeah, spoken they, they, word. They could have had given. Yeah. Yeah, they could have. Stop yeah. playing in this woman's face. Yeah, I, it's really ridiculous. <laughs> it's crazy. Not that it matters what you think, but like in a world where it, it would be nice. It would be nice. Um, it? But anyway, <laughs> like they had it right in the beginning. Um, but anyway, like what I'm saying is. <laughs> You mean the first The best album. new artists. They got it right the first year, and then they were like, mm, let's continue to sleep on her, I guess. <laughs> like as if you weren't leagues ahead of everyone else. And all respect to everyone else. But anyway. We love like, everybody. We, no, love, we love everybody, a famous line. <laughs> we love everybody. But um, love everybody. I just remember you talking about The Roof, and that was such, like, it almost felt validating for me as a kid mm -hmm. because the roof was not a track I could get over. Uh. It was like, it was, you could feel the discovery, like even just in the lyrical imagery, the rain hitting your skin, the way that you were waking up. I honestly think in that moment, I was like waking up to being queer and who I was. And I mm -hmm. think that like, that's, it's just such a vivid, beautiful song. And I want to say there actually was a moment where I, we, I was in third. I was in third grade, and we would go in, and we would they, we would have writing time. Like you could write anything in your journal. So I just wrote the lyrics to the roof. Oh wow! <laughs> and then we had to hand the journals in. <laughs> so my teacher read. Hated me. Well, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I don't. Th she must have been listening to someone else at the time. Maybe she had been playing Celine Dion because she thought it was my writing, and she goes, "I don't know what you're going through." <laughs> But wow. you are a beautiful writer. <laughs> oh, she I was. Love but that. literally, it's me talking about like you know, like having this experience. Having finish the, finish the moe. Yeah, finish the moe. The moe. <laughs> I probably, third grader I probably spelled it like M O A Y. You know I know what everybody I mean? says to me like, why do you pronounce it that way? I'm like, that's just how I always. Pronounce yeah, it. I mean, that's but right listen, <laughs> like it worked, and but I probably should have wrote Sprite or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but just to know that, like. That's the kind of song that is. Like I didn't have to get it to really get it and have mm. it be meaningful 
to me. And that's mm-hmm. like a testament to your writing and that album and what must have been such an incredible breakthrough creatively for you at that time. Thank you. Yeah, it it definitely was. Just to be able to be free mm-hmm. to write and perform in the way that I wanted as opposed to other people saying, do this. Even if I wrote Hero, that doesn't mean that's the only song or type of song that I wanted to write. Right, and you were very Mm -hmm. famous for that type of song for a long duration of time. Right, I guess. Yeah, well no, you were. (laughs) And then all of a sudden this like new person came out because you felt, I don't know, emboldened or how would you? Liberated. You, liberated. liberated, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a, a good vocab word. <laughs> it's in the song we're talking about. That's the only reason I remember. Yeah, oh, no, no, sure, no, sure. yeah. Li- oh, yeah, of course. Started feeling liberated. Started feeling liberated. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> iconic. But then your music got funnier too, I think. Do you think that, that is a, there's a link there? Like, Because all of a sudden you started making jokes. I had jokes. Like <laughs> <laughs> but how do you feel about the jokes now? You're, you're, are you no, fantastic? I do. I still do. I just haven't put out a new album in six years, as you pointed out. I'm, and look, as someone who does not believe in time, yeah, like yeah. what's time? What what is time? We you don't know, what, know what that is. <laughs> so so then so then it's, it's, it's irrelevant, right? It's like, mm-hmm. and it's also like part of the process. It's like you, it needs time to cook. It needs time to develop, and mm-hmm. and so it's all it's all it's all. You got to baste it. It requires basting. Yeah, it requires basting. <laughs> <laughs> it requires basting. It requires it's basting. like it's like Thanksgiving. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, exactly. and then at the end you get a fabulous meal with people that you love. Yeah, and, of course. Yeah. Do you like Thanksgiving or are you wanting to rush through it to get to your season? Um, I like Thanksgiving as well. I'm just I'm I'm very you know. You know the word I'm going to say fast. Fast. Yes. <laughs> and that includes the turkey day, of course. Yeah. Because you're festive for Halloween, you're festive for Thanksgiving, you're festive for Christmas. For Christmas. Yes. Yes. Uh, and and the 4th of July. Well, yes. Uh, of course. Yes. Another great track. Thank you. <laughs> I have a song called 4th of July. Yeah, it's the, you know. I, they know. If you don't know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Why are you listening to I actually, I made, I remember I made, at the time of doing the, the audio um, book, the audiobook, I made playlists for everyone who like for some reason didn't know and this is my intermediate mariah playlist ready (laughs) the roof Mm -hmm. hate you clown one of the great tracks i love clown clown is so good and we agree with you (laughs) (laughs) ex-girlfriend co-written by candy burris yes wow love we love candy Candy. um forever the distance your girl I love you, Your girl. girl, are you kidding me? Vanishing, sweetheart, and all I've ever wanted. Those are my, those are Wait, my... it's so funny that Vanishing is on there after John just said. I know, right? <laughs> we were talking about, about Vanishing just, just over there because your incredible performance of it on Saturday Night Live all those years ago. Hello. Hello. That was a, a, a fun moment. Patrick Swayze was the host? Yes. Oh. And that was like early, that was like the beginning. The yeah. very beginning of yeah. my career, yep. If you were to walk back in there in that space, like you would just, you would have even more of a command on it, I think, right? Like, I, think I don't it's... know. I think I had less, um, what's it called? I wasn't quite as nervous yeah. back then for oh, some reason. Sure, I, sure. I, I don't know why. Totally. I mean, it makes it like, I, I understand what you mean because I feel like there's this thing that, at least as it relates to SNL, people say that, like, oh, the longer you stay there, the more. The more nervous you are, which is it, it shouldn't work that way. It should work in the inverse, where yeah. it's like, oh, it's you should be more comfortable, and yet, like something about like being on display or, or just having your work be like celebrated. I'm just talking about your work be celebrated. It must mean that like there is this comfort that people are expecting from you, and it's a lot to provide that. I imagine, especially so early on in one's career, right. Yes. You know. Did you feel like it was very fast? Because in the book you talk about sort of it was only a few years into your career that it was the Tokyo show uh-huh. that you really realized just how international and how big you were. But before that, it was not. Well, because the Tokyo show was in a gigantic Tokyo Dome was ginormous. Yeah. So, you know, I found myself there and it wasn't like being at even like on Saturday Night Live, which is bigger in many ways mm-hmm. but this was spatially huge and across the world right yes you know and a totally different 
type of fan probably yeah. responding in a different way. Were they a very like engaged crowd? Did they know the words in their own way or? Um, well, my experience at that time was that everybody had to kind of be polite. Yeah. Ah. People in Japan were very polite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, um, you know, I would sing whatever the song was and then it would just be. Yeah, sure, just like sure. applause and That's then we're it. done. <laughs> done. Punct- yeah. Punctuated. Yeah. And, and somebody came up to me and said, like, please don't think that we're not appreciative of your music. This is just our culture and how, yeah. you know, it was so nice that they did that. Because I'm sitting there like, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> was it, I think, was that the show too where, or maybe that maybe not that show, but there was another show where you were trying to teach the crowd, always be my baby. You, I think you performed it for the first time. I think it was that one. It was, and it was the yeah. do 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 uh, and you were uh, trying to get them to do it, and they were just like, "We're not. <laughs> we, we can't match that. <laughs> we can't match this three. Probably another one of your greatest ever. Oh, Always gosh. be my baby. Oh, thank you. How do you thank feel you about like... just this standard now in in the industry, in the music industry that you've set, which is, or this convention really, where it's like beautiful vocal can be paired with um, a great hip hop feature. You know, like yeah. those, those two things are complementary. which I mean, no one at the time that you sort of innovated on that thought would work at all. Yeah, Fantasy, Heartbreaker pioneered that, yeah. That was, I mean, there there were other, there were other ones too. I'm trying to think of all the records I did, like with Jadakiss mm-hmm. and, huh. I mean, even Breakdown at the time. Breakdown, Breakdown yeah. Bone Thugs and oh, Harmony. Yes. Uh, I mean, that was definitely unexpected. That is such a huge part of your legacy. Like, does that, like, how how does that sit with you? Like, watching literally everybody sort of follow the blueprint that you've set. It's so interesting. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But I, you know, I didn't even say ODB, which, you know, fantasy, probably the biggest, one of the biggest. Yes, absolutely. and I really, I wanted so much to work with hip hop artists. Mm-hmm. I really did. I wanted to do my thing and then be able to listen to their vocals. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so then luckily I was able to do it, but a, a lot of people told me, oh, this could be the end of your career. Don't, you know, don't do this. That the world's had to be separate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So crazy now because in music, it feels like what is genre? Right. You know, right. Yeah. it's wild. Like you see like, you know, with Beyonce's album, Cowboy Carter, like, yes, it's country, but it's also rock. It's also Americana. It's mm-hmm. pop. It's all these things. Now it feels like if you're not blending genre. What are you doing? Right. right. <laughs> exactly. And having that moment at the Grammys with you and Miley last this year felt like such a perfect encapsulation of that, too. And it makes me it, it makes everyone really excited for whenever the whenever <laughs> the new stuff is coming, not to bring it back to this, but it's like I think <laughs> you can you are really going to take advantage of this sort of blending of it blending. all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. And I loved that moment with Miley. Yeah, so she's the best. She was so great. Oh. And so deserving. she sent me flowers. Wow. Yeah, well, she sent me beautiful flowers after that. And I was like, She's incredible. I really, like, when she gave you your props there, I mean, like, she was like, no, you have to stay right here. I think because <laughs> I would imagine that she looks up to you, like, and, like, feels indebted to you for what you've done, as everyone does and should. But we have to ask you the question. That's the centerpiece of our podcast. The centerpiece. The okay. centerpiece. <laughs> the snow globe. The Christmas snow globe of our podcast. Um, <laughs> um, Mariah Carey, what was the culture that made you say culture was for you? That formative pop culture, whether it be music, movies, it can be anything that you can look back and be like, Mariah was becoming Mariah because of that thing. Huh. <laughs> well, there's a few things. Yes. Give it to us. Um, I would have to say looking at from the time I was little, little mm-hmm. Michael Jackson when yeah. when he was a, a kid, yes, yeah. and um, then when he did like on Motown Twenty Five, mm-hmm. when he was there making like history, yeah, not the album, but making history, uh-huh. yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, just being himself, being on there, moonwalking, doing everything. Mm. I mean, it was just a moment where everybody was just watching that. Yeah. And um, 
also Prince. I love Prince. Mm. Um, and it's so sad that he's no longer with us. It truly is. Yeah. Um, I still listen to Prince all the time. Yeah. Mm. And um, yeah, I would say like Little Red Corvette. Yeah. Uh, Prince. A banger. Yes. So good. So good. And then, you know, my mother always loved uh, Marilyn Monroe. Ah. And I walked into her room one time and she was watching... Um, like when they would do those talking about like Marilyn was a, was this and that because she had passed away years right. ago and she was watching one of those retrospectives and so um, it was at that point they were looking at gentlemen prefer blondes yeah. and I didn't know who she was I just saw this like doll like woman yeah. and I was like oh my gosh and I was a, a kid, kid yeah. and uh, my mother told me who she was, and then from then on, I was a huge fan of hers and looked up all her, you know, stuff from, from her life, books about her, yeah, books by Norman Mailer, yeah, you know, mm. just like incredible. So those that's are, those are I, three very good answers. I mean, I feel like <laughs> the thing that ties them all together too is they all have such iconography. You know yes. what I mean? Like you look at them and you say, that's Marilyn, there's only one. That's Prince, mm -hmm. there's only one. That's Michael, there's only one. And you see, mm -hmm. you think of him doing the moonwalk and you immediately, that's a monoculture moment. Mm -hmm. And so do you think that that imprinting on them had something to do with the fact that you felt like almost othered and that you would grow to be you knew you could grow to become an individual and there was something about them being so singular that you identified with? I promised myself I would grow to be someone that had a successful career. Yeah. Because I did feel so othered and being of mixed race, coming from a family that was very dysfunctional, mm -hmm. um, that was a difficult road for me. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of had to adapt this this strength that was like, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to tell anybody that I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. but this is what I'm going to do. Move in silence. Move in silence. <laughs> Real G's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Move in silence until we're using our five <laughs> until, octave until range. And then we're actually taking up <laughs> some, some, some space. Some space. But yeah, between the three of those, it's like there's there's vocal trademark, there's artistic trademark, there's aesthetic trademark. It's like, mm -hmm. and, those, and those all kind of converge mm -hmm. in you and like, I mean, you really are uh, just like a, a, just a singular, all-time great, like person, and who's created all this joy. I mean, like you know, you, you've created this world and this feeling that people will never detach from; that they'll always carry with them. Hmm. That's really, it's really incredible. Thank you. I think also people so don't realize how tough Long Island can yeah, be. Yeah, talk about the Long <laughs> Island of it all. I mean, like it is though. Like you know what I mean? Like it's strong like Strong Island. Strong Island, baby. <laughs> Are you a seafood person? Um, I know you love your linguine with white clam sauce. Oh, I yeah. do. That was my dad's recipe. That's yeah. why. Why? What? What do you think? I'm just a seafood person. Like it's a Long Island thing. I'm just saying we're by the sea. Where in Long Island? Uh, so from? I'm from Islip, but my parents grew up in Lindenhurst. So I'm a I'm a South Shore kid. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why do you laugh? I laugh because <laughs> I had such a traumatic experience yeah. growing up in a place that's so racist, and that was a thing where you know my mother always wanted to live there or different places around there, and I and I had to be there, so mm -hmm. I didn't love it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> To the point where, like, you know, you go, oh, the, the the struggles that I've been through sort of define who I am. But it's like there are you there are certain things and experiences and settings in life where you go, I could have, I think I could have done without that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a few things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to get bleak about what, 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 what you can read the book, but like, and I, I honestly think it's so important that you speak so truthfully about that stuff because I think when we listen to your music, like when we listen to the song Outside, mm -hmm. when we listen to Close My Eyes, and this is stuff that Close you really opened up about mm -hmm. in Butterfly and had more, maybe sort of hinted at in your earlier work, but never really got into the darkness. And then you started to let us in. In reading the book, that's just, it obviously had to be painful to be explicit about those things. And also to know that there's other people's, you know, feelings and their people are going to have opinions about what you say. I loved 
writing the book, I collaborated with Michaela Angela Davis. Yeah, amazing. And she's awesome. I mean, when I read the book for the audio, you know, for Audible, yeah, it was eleven hours mm. of rereading the book. Mm. So at all the time, you know, spent writing the book and then reading it over and having, you know, what's the guy that comes and. Um, the editor? Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> James is his name. Yes. Hi, James. Hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey. It's time. It's time. <laughs> um, you know, just going through this stuff with the editor yeah. and, and doing all that and then being like, I'm going to spend 11 hours yeah. um, doing this, you know, speaking this book. Right. And it was right at the beginning of COVID. Right. Mm -hmm. And so... That was that, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I um, I, I actually really loved the whole process, Great. the process of writing it and and reading it aloud. And did it feel therapeutic? Yeah, it definitely felt therapeutic. I mean, I was crying when I was writing. It was a lot of just intense emotional kind of yeah you know, feelings. Um, but yeah. It was, it's It's still, I still, you know, when I see the book and it, people come and ask me to sign it and everything like that, I'm just like, you know, I feel proud that I, we did this. Yeah. You know? Because it's an opportunity for people to connect with like the, the truth about your life. And yeah. I imagine reading the audiobook felt like almost like, it, it is a performance. Mm -hmm. you know? Like besides the singing of, of the lyrics and, and your work and this thing that people connect to, it is like you, reading about your life experience is its own kind of showmanship or something? Yeah, well, it's a lot of yeah. exposure. Yeah. You know, you, you're exposing your life and these details that you already put out there and wrote, but then you, now you're going to read it. And yes, yeah, sometimes I sang, sometimes I decide, you know, figured out, okay, I'll sing this or I'll we'll write this as a melody or whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, but... It's um, it's one of my things that I've done that I'm most proud of. Yeah. yeah, I would imagine too that like the fun moments of it were probably so fun to relive. Like even like obviously it was like a tense moment, like the divas live of it all. <laughs> you getting prepared and Aretha being like Mariah, they're playing games. They're playing games. <laughs> <laughs> but that had to be so fun to relive in a way. Like that night, well, that's actually been mentioned on this show many, many times. times. I know there used to be a skit. Yes, oh my gosh. there was. Yes. You mean on Saturday Night Live? Yeah, was it was Anna Gasteyer, Molly Shannon, and Sherry, right? Doing be, Shania, yes, Mariah, right, and Celine. Celine. Yep, 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 yep. Oh my God, that's so fun. Yes. That, that, that is like. Truly, they, iconic. they don't make a show like that anymore, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no, they don't. Ugh. They have to. They have to, though. I mean, they... but will it will it be as big ever? I don't know. Look how long it's been in existence. I know. I know. You know what, though? I would say it's like that's the type of thing now that you think they would reboot because they're rebooting everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so much success comes with like you know we're seeing the cast of Friends together again. Harry yeah. Potter gets back together and does an eight part whatever on HBO. Like you know they did Mean Girls again, which yeah. I want to talk to you about. <laughs> like um, it just feels like Divas Live. Like, like, obviously we can't bring everybody back, but like to have y'all come back and like, I think all get together and some of the, you know, new generation, I think would be amazing. It could be. It could be. <laughs> I mean, I feel like this has been a really banner year in like um, women and music. And I feel like it's, it's the perfect period on the whole year for you to come back with. With the Divas Live, yeah. well, with the Divas Live, but I'm, but I'm also just saying like Merry Christmas, like Merry Christmas, and, and it's their thirtieth anniversary. And yeah, yeah. Going it feels on tour like again. it's like synergy there. It's yeah. like the, you are the ultimate. We've and been this waiting has been for a year you. when so many people <laughs> have like made these amazing pop efforts, and then at the end of the year there will be Mariah's thirtieth anniversary during Christmas, which it doesn't get bigger. <laughs> it doesn't get more timeless, you know, than, than that. I Do mean, you get tired of doing all I want for Christmas this year? No. <laughs> she says no, no. No way, darling. It's so funny. We we were doing um, you know, my show in Vegas and yeah. I went out um onto the stage at during this one part where they we 
didn't do the song I was supposed to do, which was Circles from Mimi. I uh, love and, Circles. I mean, I do it every other night, but sure, on sure. this night I was like, okay, we're not going to do that. And you guys Oof. start playing the beginning of All I Want for Christmas is You, mm. and I'll run out there. Yeah. And um, that's what happened. It was wow. funny. It was cute. You like Vegas because you, you, you keep going back. It's, 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 it's I a keep nice going gig. back because people keep booking. Yeah, they keep booking, and then, and then they can come to you. Well, the no, I don't. I mean, people that work for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, now that we've talked about circles, I have to ask. Mm -hmm. So you, we talked about butterfly, and that's like a landmark. Like that is like mm -hmm. definitely you think one of your best. Like I think a lot of your fans would agree. But then there was Emancipation, and of course, all your albums are incredible. But Emancipation, like, what did that feel like? To like release that and have everyone not not that you proved everybody wrong, but obviously there was a there was a period there where there was some tumult for mm -hmm. whatever reason, mm -hmm. and then you come back with Emancipation, which is talk about track by track. Oh my god! I mean, <laughs> your girl I mentioned before, it's on my intermediate Mariah playlist. I love that playlist. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, well, I'll send it's it to it's you. It's very tasteful. It's very good. You'll love it. It is tasteful. It is tasteful. <laughs> tasteful. And it's eclectic. <laughs> It's a diverse, eclectic, tasteful eclectic, mix. Eclectic, tasteful It's very demure. Mix. It's de it's mindful as it's well. Yes! <laughs> uh, not like other girls. I felt I was being mindful when putting it together. Absolutely. This is years yeah, ago. Of course. What, wait, what do you think about All I've Ever Wanted being on there? Because that's an old one. Yeah. You don't I don't. Love? No, no, no. I, I like it. I yeah. like that song. Like, when I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's good. It's It's not like... I would do a couple of like kind of genre specific ish ones, mm -hmm. like one that with the Mimi songs that are just like yes. your girl yes. circles, mm -hmm. maybe fly like a break. I can't name them all now, but you know, mm, sure, sure. and then butterfly to the floor. Song. Also, I, I that was on the other day, and I was like, God damn, to the floor <laughs> hits everybody to the floor. Yes, <laughs> it's like that never too. released though. Ne right. What do you mean, like as a single? Yeah. That song was that album was made of singles. I guess you but then you went to the deluxe, right? And then we got yes, Don't Forget Platinum, About Us, which yes. was a bop. Yes. Is, I love Don't Forget. I wish you knew. No, I wish you knew is on the No, I wish you knew is on that. That see, I listen to that song and 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 for you to do that that, that like arena moment where you're just like talking Very to I Diana. just did it in in, in a You did it? In Vegas, <sighs> yeah. <sighs> and That's a moment. Else. Overseas as well. Overseas, Overseas as well. Overseas as well. I knew that the album was strong. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, you know, I, when it did what it did in terms of the charts and then having it go platinum and then re releasing and yeah. Yeah. all that stuff, I, I felt so good. Yeah. Um, of course. Is there, is there a potential for it to be a trilogy where it's like, Three MC or something. You have E at E equals MC squared, but then you have like do you, do you, do you, the math is going to fly the, out. The math, the math is flying out. I mean, I feel like there, there's there's something neat about it being like a three part, a three part, a three thing. pronger, a three pronger, a three pronger, like a trident, triangle, triangle. Yes, <laughs> yes. I just call it a three pronger. A three, a three pronger is great. A dingle hopper. <laughs> Um, is there a chance of like another album with yeah. a different type of uh, like naming it? So well, what you... well, actually, well, well, do you think people say that people have have drawn the comparison of cautioned into like that sort of like like emancipation sort of like sound or like mm -hmm. that like philosophy? And so like I don't. Do you consider caution to be like the third installment of this, or do you think like there it's coming in the future? Like like is there a vision for this? I think it's coming in the future. Oh mm. my god! Yes. Wow. That would be thrilling. Okay. I just got chills. And I yeah. hope you like it. Oh, we're oh. pleased. We will. <laughs> How many times do you watch Mean Girls a week? Oh, I haven't watched it in a while. Okay. Because okay. sometimes even your favorite movie, you can't, like, I used to watch Clueless, like, uh -huh. at least twice a month. Uh-huh. And then I, I have put it away for now. I need to put, bring Mean Girls back yeah. and, and watch it tonight. Honestly, tonight might be the night. It might be tonight because in honor of this moment. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Tina was here and she's thrilled that you love Mean Girls so much. She is. Yes. Okay. I saw you I saw y'all play that trivia game. Yes, I won. <laughs> you did. You you do everything. <laughs> you beat her at her own film. Beat her at her own film. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Tina. What about a return to acting for you anytime soon? Because you were brilliant and precious. So good. Thank you. Um I don't know. Mm. Did you watch the the new um movie? No, I didn't. I with know. With Glenn Close? 
Yeah, I, I, I heard all about it. <laughs> what do you think about what you've heard? Well, I'm not a, a person that likes to watch horror. Sure. Yeah, it's hard and very scary. Yeah, I don't do I don't that. want that to be in my head. Like, no. You know, I'll 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 say no. I'll say okay. no to that. When you go to Disney, <laughs> when you go to Disney World, because we know you're a fan. Uh huh. I you, am. Do you do scary rides? I do Tower of Terror. Oh, that's a classic. It's so good, truly a classic. And they better never touch it. No. You and Ariana Grande have the same feeling about Tower of Terror. She has written an entire notes app <laughs> statement and a, a petition, basically, to Disney that she she has <laughs> saved. And I can reveal this. She wouldn't mind me blowing up this this spot, but she is like, if you do anything to Tower of Terror in Orlando. <laughs> there will like, be a revolt. There will be... You. Right, because they did it in LA. They made it the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is cute. Which is not bad. No, no it's not bad. bad. Yeah, it's but not it's the not Tower the Tower of, Tower of Terror. It's not a classic. It's raining. Yes. Oh. Oh. See, so... But you can do that kind of spooky scary. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's also because it's a ride. So yeah, you can go sure, up and sure. down on it. But you're in it, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. You're, you're in the spook. Well, that's the thing is like... I don't like scary movies at all, but I can do a haunted house because I feel like I can run away. You know what I mean? It's like when you have me on foot, I'm very spry. Or I am very spry. I understand. <laughs> and so I can get away from the terror. Do you have top three favorite Disney rides? Oh my god! Tower of Terror is up there. Tower of Terror in Orla uh, Orlando. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, where, uh, where I used to like, and I guess it's not there anymore, the <gasps> Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain. It's now Princess Tiana. Oh, it is. It so is. now it's, it's called. Uh, we call it Princess Tati's, Tati's Bayou, Bayou Dip, Dip. It's but it's called right. Princess Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And I hear it's cute. Jennifer Lewis is in it. Do they still let that the drop and everything? You still oh, drop. Yeah. You still you still get your frills and your thrills. Well, I'll give it a shot then. Give it a <laughs> shot. Get down there. <laughs> okay, so that's two. One more. One more. Um, what else at Disney? Do oh my gosh. So so many. The um, well, it's not Disney though. What is it? I was gonna say Harry Potter. Yeah, but oh, you know yeah. what? You where this is the NBC Universal show too. Love we Harry love Potter. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love Disney. Yay, Disney! <laughs> but I do I love, love all the corporations. We love you all, all the corporates in the land. Um. <laughs> no one should be left out. No one should be left out. <laughs> mm -mm. Speaking of corporations, <laughs> what we have, we we have, we have a very important question to ask you about about two about two lyrics. Oh yes. Okay. Okay. We want to say if you have to choose one or the other of your two lyrics. These are two of our favorite lyrics that you've ever done. Okay. It's them, them chickens, chickens is ash and, and I'm lotion, lotion mm -hmm. or you a mom, mom and pop. pop I'm, I'm a corporation. corporation I'm, I'm a press, press conference, conference. You a conversation. conversation. That one. Yeah. It that is for all time. It's for all time. And it really does say what you need to say. I mean, it you're does. you are you, I'm all of this. <laughs> I'm a press conference, you a conversation. Your conversation. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so so wait, ha, and by the way, just like not to call it bizarre, but that is hello. Where does yes. that come yes, from? Yes, yes. Like when you. What when, do you mean? When like you get is. that riff together, where does that come from? Because it is uh, no one else would think of hello. It's truly original. It's, it's so truly original. It's so singular. How does that come to you? I don't know. I was just writing the song, and that was just an ad lib after laying it down. Okay, Are you in the okay. studio being like, play it back, play it back, play it back, and then giving different vocals like again and again and again? Or Sometimes. You, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes I do that. So I some, think that's the most fascinating part of recording. Oh, yeah. Like the stacking and the harmonies and like that has the to be The stacking and harmonies is so much fun. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. then you get the sound that you want. Yes. Yeah. When you write, are you hearing it as a full song or are you hearing the bare bones? Like when you, when you are d struck, like, is it like you can hear, is it like a, a turn of phrase that inspires you or is it like a melodic thing usually? Or is it always different? It's always different. But if there's just like a melody that's coming to me and yeah. let's say I'm, somebody's playing the piano yeah. and I'm like, no, play. Da, 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 da. Don't don't play. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But both of those could be different, mm -hmm. like me melodically, on top of each one. Sure. Because mm -hmm. if you're just singing in front of the on, on top of the plain one, that's like la, da, 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 da. you can just make up anything, and mm -hmm. it's easy. Something else you have to follow 
or work around mm-hmm. what the keys are doing. Right, it's holding the center too much. But are, yeah. do, you have, do you have any sort of synesthesia, you think, about like you hear a sound, but you also sense something else, you see it or you feel it or like, does that make sense? It's, yeah, it's a sensory situation yeah, yeah, yeah. and you feel it and hear it. And if it's really something that's gonna end up being close to your heart, then you just go in and do it. Mm. And mm-hmm. like, how often do you write? Like, are you writing like all the time? Like, let's just say, like, will could you write tonight? <sighs> not tonight. <laughs> not I mean, tonight. I I could, but I'm I'm like not. I'm staying in a hotel. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need your atmosphere. Well, yes, and it'd be nice if I, if let's say I'm working with a bunch of different people right now, mm-hmm. and let's say I, I say, oh, I want to go work with such and such. Um, from across town. Yeah, from across mm-hmm. town. <laughs> My girl across town. Yeah, across town. I know a guy across town. I know a guy. <laughs> I like um, him. Yeah, he's yeah. all right. He's all right. He's all right. <laughs> He'll do. He's a character. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do. He'll do. He knows. <laughs> no, but you know, so. <laughs> That's the thing. I would say, let, let me go work with the, the guy from across town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a really good, let's say, maybe probably keyboard player is what I usually like yeah. to work with. Um, and then, you know, we could pick up where we left off. Or we could write something new, you know. Yeah. Let's say I had a different idea. Could we work on mm-hmm. this and then sing it to them? and. But the guy's across town. Yeah, but, you got to get there. But yeah. the, no, but are you Not going there? Or is he coming to you? Probably we'll meet at a studio. <laughs> okay, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Do you have a favorite studio you record in? Like, is there like an iconic place that you go that like you feel like brings out a certain Mariahness? The iconic studio of my house. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Well, that, there you go. I mean, we were so happy during the pandemic when you were. When you were giving it to us, yes, those, those moments, those were great. yeah, really that nice. we belong oh, together in particular, you. that was amazing. Thank you. And also, yes. wait, shout out to that thing you did recently. There was like uh, you and Brandy together. <gasps> oh, that was fun. We did you, the roof. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I got. I need to see Brandy. Hi, Brandy. Where are you? She's a legend too. She's amazing. Just one of those like all timers. All timers. I always say, have you ever? Oh my God. Have yeah. You Ever is one of those songs. Yeah. It's like, you hear it and you're like, oh wow. And then you actually like, you attempt to sing it. It's so rangy. It's, it's so, rangy. so wild. But that's another, because I think the beginning of that song is also all like stacked. a hard, all stacked. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that was sort of. She loves to do that. Yeah. She's really, she's great at that. Mm. Yeah. Because when we were working together, she was like, we were having fun stacking. Yeah. And adding little parts. Because you guys together, your voices together, it's extremely complimentary. Oh, I love her voice. I yeah. love it so much. I remember it was the actually the night of the Grammys. It was with um it was with I was I was with Ari and she was telling me that at the time it was not officially but she was like, Mariah's gonna be on the Yes and remix. I was like, Oh my god. The Yes and remix was <laughs> That's gonna be such a gag. And then we and then we saw Miley go up and then like I, I just remember it being such a nice moment where everybody in the room was just so happy for you. It really was a nice moment, I yeah. have to say. Even though all the history that we have with the Grammy. I know, of well, <laughs> they can still make it right. Well, they can't ever really make it right, but they could do something. Hmm. Meet in the middle. Like, we meet that guy across town. We meet that guy. He he can make it happen. Why not? We have our own award show called the Culture Awards. Oh, you do? We're Mm -hmm. doing doing a big venue. We might give Butterfly a retroactive. (gasps) Why don't we? Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Album of the year. Album of the year. You could. We're gonna do that. We're, we're an official awards body. We are an official awards body. That's we are the, we are the cult. You're, you can win the Emmy, the Grammy, the Oscar, the Tony, and the Cult. It's the culture award. <laughs> the culture the award. Culture so you like can win the cult. The cult. It's like the cult, but you, but you culture it. You, you, you culture cult it. So you know, stay tuned. I Mark love that. Day. I'll write it down. <laughs> I'll write it down. <laughs> um, uh, by the way, whenever you call, also from that album, one oh, of the great oh songs. Yeah. That is a that, and I mean, I loved it with you and Brian, but just to how it was too. Like that is that's like all time Mariah to me as well. Thank you. Whenever you call, love. Oh, that's wait, a good one. Also, growing up, I remember there's an Irish band Westlife. Yeah, <gasps> I love Westlife. And but yeah. I mean, you have your own against all odds, you know, track. But then I liked it when I, I really, I also really enjoyed the one yeah. you guys were featured together. They came up to the studio in Capri where I was working. <gasps> yeah, and that's when Simon was Simon Kell. It was manager? Simon. I think it was. Yeah, Simon. Yeah, yeah, he was their manager, and um, 
they came up there and we filmed it and everything. Yeah. And they, the guys did their parts and I kept mine. The, they, those are some cute guys. They were adorable. They were adorable. And I love that video because it is like one of those, and I, we need videos like this where it's in the, it's just shot in the studio. Mm-hmm. It's everyone singing the on the everyone mic. Just yes. Singing. Yeah, yep. Ugh, I mean, and you belt in that song. Yeah. Oh really my do. God. I love that song. <laughs> anyway. Well, wait. Do okay. Before we get do I don't think so, honey, I have to ask one more question, which I promised myself I would ask. Can you drop that grunge album? <gasps> I know, right? Drop it. I'm so mad that I haven't done that yet. But you don't have to be mad it's because you're away. in control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. I am, but who do I drop it with? I oh, need to should we it. start a label? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you right. can just put it, just put it, you know what would be kind of chic? If you mm. just put it out on like a garage band or something, like a grungy thing. I could do that. It's a good album. I want to hear sure. it. Oh, you haven't heard any of it. No, I mean okay. we've heard we've heard like what you allowed us to hear, yes. just those little snippets. But like we need to hear that. Okay. And the fact you that you will just hear did it. that, incredible. <laughs> that was just like I was getting life from that. Like yeah, the, you could tell. The, seriously, but that's like the prince in you. Like that's like the prince. It's like you could you like you like, and that's like the genre thing. It's like oh, it doesn't matter. Like I can. I'm a musician, I'm an artist, I can do it in any kind of thing. Yeah. And it was jokes as well, there were lots I, of uh, <laughs> See, I, and I wanna hear what the jokes were at that time. I mean, they're everlasting. They are everlasting <laughs> jokes. <laughs> everlasting jokes title of that. Everlasting jokes. Um, okay, so now we'll do I Don't Think So Honey because I'm happy we've now convinced you to release it and uh, we can count on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I should, no, you're right. Honestly, and just know that no one's forgotten about it after you dangled it so. Okay. And we've reminded, we have not forgotten we've about the it. People. Okay. okay, this is I Don't Think So Honey. This is our segment that we do on this podcast each and every time where we take one minute to rant against something in pop culture that needs a ranting. And I'm gonna do it because two women really uh, tore me up this morning. This is Matt Rogers, I Don't Think So Honey's time starts now. I Don't Think So Honey, Hoda Kotb and Jenna Bush Hager making me cry this morning. Uh-huh. I was already feeling an emotional type of way because I knew Mariah was coming and I was so excited. And then Hoda has announced she's leaving the Today Show mm. and her and Jenna Bush Hager sobbing at each other, Ugh. ma'ams. You didn't have to be so legendary at us. That was <laughs> so emotional. They are so real. We've met them before. They are incredible. Hoda, I support you in whatever you do, but not making me sob like this. Mm. Seriously, I was on my way to listen to, 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 I was trying to listen to Mariah get prepared, and I had Hoda Kotb making everyone break down. It was like we had lost a great leader this morning on the Today Show. Uh. All of them clasping hands yeah. like they were like ready for the Titanic to go down, I'm like, oh my God, it really seconds. feels like the end of an era because it is. Hoda, we love you. Please don't leave NBC Universal for good. Please come do some special reports. We love you, but also spend time with your kids Five and seconds. babies, as it were. Um, <laughs> and we love you, Hoda, and we'll miss you every day on today. And that's one minute. I mean, it was major news. Like, I was like, the Times, Washington Post, they were all like breaking. Hoda Kabi announced that she's leaving today. It's, it's like, a it's, it's major, a major, it's going to be a huge void. I'm oh, man. No. Like, the, the, you take for granted Hoda every day day on the Today Show. Just a comfort. Um, it, was, it was giving the Broad City finale, like the two of them saying goodbye <laughs> to each other. I was like, oof, these girls. But yeah, we love you, Hoda. We love you, Hoda. And Jenna, that was a really special moment. Okay, this is Bo and Yang's I Don't Think So Honey. Okay. Are you ready, Bo? I am ready. This is Bo and Yang's I Don't Think So Honey, his time starts now. I Don't Think So Honey, Boxing Day, the day after <laughs> Christmas, sometimes <laughs> celebrated in Canada and the US. This is the origin of Boxing Day. It was a day meant for servants and poor people so that they could gift, get gifts, and now it's just an extra day to shop. So it's giving <laughs> class, it's giving like class warfare either way you slice it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like a holiday for poor people. It's giving separate but equal. Just lump it in with Christmas yeah. and don't extend the holidays after the 25th. We're done. This, uh, our guest, this legend is off the clock. Don't make her work <laughs> a second longer than she needs to. Which don't, you know, it just implies that, you know, oh, well, then people have to make a Boxing Day album. No, no, no. 25th, it's over. Seconds. It's curtains. The holidays are a time for joy and peace and togetherness and, and, and warmth and all these cozy things. The 26th, it's a weird Five number. Seconds. I don't like it. 1226, <laughs> it, 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 we're, we're in that dead zone between then and New Year's, and it should stay that and way. And that's what minute he says on 926. <laughs> New Year's overrated. New Year's overrated. Because it's like... <sighs> You know, I had I had a great time just staying in the city for New Year's this this past New Year's. Oh yeah, we stayed in the city instead. We usually do a trip. Uh huh. The no, trip on New Year's put. is always overrated. Uh, definitely because you're 
around, surrounded by drunk right. drivers. Yes. yes, yes, and all of that. Stay local. Stay local. Stay local. Stay chill. Also, it's like when you're a kid, New Year's is fun because it's like you're staying up till midnight. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the novelty of that is gone. It's like I'm up till midnight <laughs> <laughs> each and every night. There you go. I'm not a nerd. No. Anyways, no, actually, these days I am going to bed. I, I am going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Do you have something on your mind? <sighs> There's always something on my mind. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we are go. excited to say this is Mariah Carey's I Don't Think So, Honey. Her time starts now. Uh, I don't think so, honey. Listen, I can't with the overhead lighting. Oh. Why do they do it to us? Why? Why? And I shouldn't even say us because it's not us. It's me. I'm the <laughs> one that gets the most tortured <laughs> by the hideous lighting in every elevator, doorway, uh, gyms. Mm, yeah. Not that I go to the gym, but I'm just saying it's hideous lighting. The sun. Yeah. I, I mean, the sun is okay if it's at sunset. <laughs> yes. And then I will gladly go outside and put the, you know, a little seconds. hat on yes. or whatever. And that'll be pretty because it's sunlight uh, uh, caressing your skin. Of course. Uh, but it's bad for you, so you gotta be careful of that. <laughs> but overhead lighting, I don't think so, honey. No, Please no. stop it. Every place I go, I, I shut the lights. 15 Turn seconds. them out. I don't want to see them uh, no more. Yes. No okay. more, honey. No, no more, seconds. baby. One more thing on All right, overhead look, lighting. One more thing on overhead lighting. It makes me sick. <laughs> 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 the fact that we got Mariah Carey's I don't think so many on overhead lighting is an all timer. I mean. How do we do today? We did pretty oh, you good. You guys did good because these are like, yeah. you know, here and here. I noticed that. I like, you know oh. that I said to them yeah. early, I was like, let's get this lighting together. We cannot miss on this, you guys. I think people are catching up to you. like With the lighting, they're with, trying, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, now it's like, and I'm, I'm, we're gonna key, we're gonna clue everybody in on this, like, a classic gay guy's apartment now is no overhead lining. It's just <laughs> mood lighting and different classic corners. Gay guy. That's it. And it's, it's a little sexier that way. Those little orbs that are lit it's up. It's orbs on you know the floor. Yes. Yeah. yeah, those like soft orbs around. Mm -hmm. What's what's the home? What's the home rig like? What's the home situation? I feel that the best way is. Uh, recessed lighting yeah mm. and then you're walking and it's like splash of light yes. splash of light yeah. you know yeah. it's it's not anything more than that that's needed sumptuous yeah. sumptuous it is sumptuous. sumptuous i think that's yeah. a word if you can try to include that in try that for that next time yes right. no, 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 and, and a song and, and you know <laughs> throw sumptuous in a song i feel like i did that i'm sure you have i don't know if i did wait there was it a word like a mariah word there was a word just now in your out of things honey that caress caress <laughs> go back in time yes <laughs> um okay wait them babies are you excited to take them to see wicked i'm excited to hang out with them whenever i can yeah yes, of kids course. like they're just always doing something else. Are they 13? Uh, yes. Now, but you had, that's you, the age. You had them on tour last year though. Yeah, I did, they were 12. They were 12, and now, but they're, 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 such <laughs> now they're teens. Teens, they're teens now. I know, I can't think about it. Okay. I'm gonna have to rant again. Them <laughs> 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 dem babies are dem teens? <laughs> they're dem teens now. Wild. <laughs> um, this is so sublime. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. We, I, I mean, I just can't say enough. Like, like I said, like I think you're so much of the reason why, like, I am who I am. And thank you so much for everything that you've given of your talent, of your gift, of your songwriting. I mean, we could sit here and talk to you forever. You really are just the best, and you oh. will always be that for me. Um, and I'm so happy to meet you. The, Thank you so much. The way you've shaped the, the culture and the industry and the way you've shown people how to navigate it is truly invaluable and um, we all thank you. For There's that. a hero. <laughs> <laughs> we end every episode with, with a song. song. Oh. And actually this one, I really want to more respect on this okay, name. Okay. Dream, love, come rescue me. Take me up, take me down, take me anywhere you want to, baby, now. And for the rest of that, you can listen to the fantasy record. <laughs> Bye. No, that's Music Box. That's oh, Music, music Box. box. <laughs> Put it in we're cutting out. Wow. Do not let me oh have all God. this knowledge and then flop at the end. Lost Culturistas is a production by Will Ferrell's Big Money Players and iHeartRadio Podcasts. Created and hosted by Matt Rogers and Bowen Yang. Executive produced by Anna Hosmier and Han Sani. Produced by Becca Ramos. Edited and mixed by Doug Bame and Monique Laborde. And our music is by Henry Kaberski. 
Hey everybody, it's me, Matt Rogers, letting you know tickets are on sale now to see me on tour. The Prince of Christmas tour, that is. I'm doing my whole album, Have You Heard of Christmas, plus a lot more with the whole band all throughout December. Go to www.mattrogersofficial.com to see me in a city near you. 